I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And today we're going to discuss the topic of the possible roller coaster ride of emotions that you may be feeling as you contemplate your PCS or your civilian move to Guam. You might be feeling a wide range of emotions like excitement or anticipation. So today's video, we're going to cover some of the more boring aspects of moving to Guam, like where to get your car registered, who's some reliable car mechanics, where to go to Kmart. <laughs> And in future and subsequent videos, we will film stuff like where's some cool outdoor stuff? Where do you go mountain biking? Where do you put your boat in the water? Woo! Woo! This is more of just an excuse to ride this super fun roller coaster that's inside the Micronesia Mall. Uh, because the rest of this video is going to be pretty boring. <laughs> And today we're going to go over something a little bit more mundane that we've had several people message us about is if you're moving to Guam, whether you're civilian or military, what are some things you might need to know? Come on, fam. All right, so this is one of the most dreaded parts of your initial visit to Guam that everybody hates. It's not just Guam, but it's anywhere you move to that's new. And that is getting your vehicle registered uh while you're here so this office we're going to show you is strictly for vehicle registrations uh putting a vehicle in your name and you know you got to get your yearly sticker like all states so it's under the department of tax and revenue and there are now two buildings and when you look up the main one it will be more towards like central north area and then this one is right by the kmart so vehicle registration is right by the kmart and on google maps the pin has the incorrect building so we're going to show you which building it actually is so when you you pull off the marine corps which is the main road here that's the main interstate and you'll come up to this inner t intersection you take this right and you find your parking spot now we're going to show you which door to walk into because this took me like an <laughs> idiom idiot amount of time the other day super embarrassing uh and so let's go do this so you don't have to have that same awkward moment yes. so this is your parking lot uh that you can park in for free uh <laughs> thanks to gov guam and then this is the building that you're going to be facing at. And as you can see, there's not a lot of clear signage. We're going to feed you baby birds. Open up those mouths. We're going to feed you with some hot knowledge. <laughs> so once you um, aimlessly walk around uh, in a couple circles, you will find the tiny white signs that give you the arrows to point to the entrance, which Chris and I did not find when we individually came. You know, today's video is really exciting. <laughs> this is one of our top exciting videos. And uh, that's the door right here. It's got the cool Bon Jovi sign. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Bon Jovi album cover, Slippery When Wet, um, <laughs> but that, that's a cool thing. Anyway, that's the door. You go in that door. You go in that door, you bring your vehicle inspection, your registration, and that's it. What's that? What are you guys doing? Filming. We're trying to show where to get your... Where uh, this building is? Yeah. Okay, why don't you guys come on a working day? It's not like now. It will look suspicious. Why are you guys filming here on the cameras? We have cameras all around here. That's okay. okay. Yeah. We were just showing the location because on maps, uh, it actually shows up as that building. So we were trying to help out other people to determine that it's actually this corner. Yeah, but you cannot just come and just do that. You need to get permission. Okay. So if you're going to come film here, you need to get permission before you come film, but this is where it is. Okay. No, no. Yeah. Well, we're finished. Yeah, we're done. And I won't be here. No, okay. I won't be on the film. I'll just wait. No, it's oh, okay. Oh, no. We really it's just okay. did it. We just wanted to show the sign in the door because on Google Maps, it comes up as that building. And so like a couple times that we've come, we just wanted to show that it's just not that building. It's over here. Oh, okay. That's all. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. That's why I don't like filming in public. That's why all our videos are not in public or are in the jungle. But so when you do your vehicle registration, you just need to get your vehicle inspected, which we're going to go show you next where to get your vehicle inspected. And you bring that paperwork, your proof of insurance and your vehicle uh, registration. And that's all you need. Those three documents and you'll be in and out of this building in about 20 minutes. <laughs> no, no, we're in public. You can't. Those are the rules. You can dab all the people on, on the roller coaster. No! Um, this has been one of our go-to places. Not talking trash on any other auto repair shops on island, but there's two we go to. 
One of them in the more northern part of Guam here is uh, Gino's Auto Service, which is a family run business and they do pretty much all auto repair. Uh, we've had them do motor mounts, air conditioning, spark plugs, rack and pinion, all the work keeping our garbage cars going for the last three years, which we the, this place has really come to know our vehicles and they've been really friendly and they watch our channel, which is great. Also, because they're they're good, they're going to be backed up. So a lot of times you're going to want to call a week, two weeks in advance and they're going to book you in. Another reality of living on Guam is that parts availability is not the greatest. So I like to say everything on Guam takes an extra step. So whatever you're thinking, add an extra step. So a lot of times here, you're gonna drop your car off at the mechanic and then they're gonna have to figure out what's wrong with your car or, and then order the parts. So you're gonna come pick your car back up again, take it home and they're gonna call you and schedule when the parts arrive so they can actually do the, the repair. I drove this Camry that we're driving around in today for a month with the emergency brake because our front rotors were shot and I had to drive it with the emergency brake and one hand on the emergency brake release for a month waiting on the rotors to get here. The difference if, in this mechanic that we go to and the one down south is the one down south doesn't do AC repair but they do most other major repairs and the one down south also does quick vehicle inspections. So let's go check that one out now. Like oh look part. at that birthday party, they're all getting a dab. <laughs> they're all getting a dab. <laughs> All right, so this is if you live a little bit more down south, maybe closer to Navy Base uh, or Agate or Umatic or somewhere like that, this garage might be closer to you. And so this is Joe and Frank's. Yes, this is Joe and Frank's. This is Joe and Frank's Auto Shop. The one thing that they do not do uh, is AC work, but we've had really good luck with this shop also for doing lots of other work uh, on Tires, on, brakes. Yep, on our myriad of Guam bombs. Yes. The thing that this place does that um, Gino's is uh, a really fast vehicle inspection. So when you first get here and you need to inspect your vehicle, you you drive up here on the other side uh, and you don't even have to get out of the car and they'll go through your vehicle inspection and you can be on your way to the DMV. So they're just looking for vehicle safety stuff. So yeah, it's a lot quicker than, they're not hooking it up to your OBD connection port and checking for check engine lights and stuff. It's only your safety inspection, which is really nice and uh, good because it's smaller government intrusion into your life. And as someone who doesn't like a lot of government intrusion, I'm okay with safety inspections, uh, but the rest of uh, failing my 2003 Nissan Xterra uh, for the fourth time for a, a knock engine sensor that has nothing to do with emissions and making me pay $1,200 to put it back on the road two separate times because the light's on on the dash and that has nothing to do with emissions is government overreach. And Guam doesn't do that. <laughs> so Joe and Frank's, you live a little farther down south? Another good option, Joe and Frank's and Geno's. Thumbs up. So the cost of this roller coaster, in case you're interested, is six dollars per person and right. you get you get three laps and uh, it's uh, super worth it when you get here so all right so while elizabeth is uh trying not to get us murdered in our guam bomb <laughs> we're gonna cruise by to a slow slow troll on what is the military pcs used car lot um so if you didn't ship a car here you chose not to ship a car here this is an option for you uh, and they also carry some cool of the, the, the key vehicles, you know, key trucks, the small vehicles that are getting popular, the small four-wheel drive jimmies and stuff like that, and the small vans. Uh, or if you're trying to sell your vehicle before you leave, that's one of the military PCS used car lots. And it's right down here. Uh, I think this area is considered Aniqua, uh, which is uh, right across from Mark's store and right across from Joe and Frank's shop. So you could go there and then go get your vehicle inspected. Also, we're passing by a Napa. Napa Auto Parts store. Um, that is going to be what I call your last ditch, last resort effort to get some car parts because car parts on Guam are very expensive. And what I have found is that Napa, uh, unlike Home Depot and some of the other chain stores here, Napa and CarQuest charge a lot more for parts. So most people go through Rock Auto. I'd never really used Rock Auto in the stores. I've used to just go into Napa or Advance Auto. But on Guam, when you go to Napa, uh, when I put a starter in this Camry, I had to have it tomorrow for work. The starter was two, two and a half times the cost it was on Rock Auto and about double the cost it was uh, at a stateside auto parts store. Um, and that's a one example. I've, I've done that with brakes and stuff like that. Also, this Napa might not, and not just this Napa, but most car parts stores on Guam uh, don't have a lot in stock. So like there's some things that aren't carried frequently in stock like rotors i've had a really hard time finding brake rotors and you get them shipped in and again that's why i drove this car for a month with no front brakes um so just to keep that in mind 
there are auto parts store here. There, ch there are chain auto parts store here, but for some reason they're way more expensive than uh, like Home Depot is. It keeps the prices much sim 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 more similar to what they're on the state States. side. Yeah. Oh, we got four laps. Oh, it's four laps. It's four, not three. What a bargain! <laughs> All right. So one of my favorite little shops on this whole island is called Champion Sporting Goods, uh, and it's here in Manilao. And it's this really small shop, but it has everything. I come here for weightlifting stuff, fishing stuff, um, just random stuff. Slingshots, BB guns, spear guns, um, anything sporting goods related, they're going to have one here. And you just have to spend a minute looking around because it's a really small shop and everything's really crammed in. But it's a really fun place to, when you first get to island, just come look around. It's teeny tiny, but it's got a lot of neat stuff. Let's walk around in here and see what they got. They've got everything here from your little stuff, like we catch jungle perch with, all these little jigs, some big trolling plugs, gaffs, dive gear, fishing stuff. Just a fun place to come look around. If you partake in any of the sports, they have stuff for the sports. The jujitsu martial arts sports, the ball sports, whichever sports you do, they have sports things. Even maybe the less popular sports, like the ping pong or the billiards. That probably has the most variety of um, outdoor recreational and sports equipment that we've found so far on island. And it's a nice little shop. They always ask you if you want help. All right, now let's go check out the next cool spot on the place. Uh, next cool spot on the island you need to see. Oh my gosh! Oh, five laps. Whoa! Okay, so we lied to you, it's five laps. It's five laps for $6 per person. That's a really good value. That's a good value. You gotta come check this out. <laughs> I really thought it was three the one time we came. I did too. Maybe it changes. All right, gang. Here we are at the, the nicest grocery store on Guam, which is uh, Payless. And this is the nicest of the nicest, the newest one here. Uh, I guess this is Mong Mong. You yeah, Mong Mong Toto this? Mighty or MTM. Straight across from the airport. Um, but this air, this uh, grocery store is open 24 hours, I believe. Yes, it's one of the few stores that are open 24 hours. It's this and Kmart. And, fun fact, it's owned by some of the most powerful people on Guam. Uh, with, they have a monopoly. It's the Calvo <laughs> family. They own this. Uh, car insurance that you might go through while you're here. They own uh, a lot of stuff here. Uh, so let's go support the most powerful family on this whole island. This Payless also tends to have the most American-sized aisles. And what I mean by that is that two carts can usually fit down the aisle, whereas most of the other stores here, it's pretty narrow and um, like a little claustrophobic if you're used to American-sized stores. So this little six-pack of uh, Lagunitas here, just six six little beers uh, is $13 and you'll see your prices a lot of times it'll be priced by the can um, like this is a four pack for $8 so it's a, it's a little higher if you want to drink um, you know you see your 19 your $28 IPAs um, you're gonna spend more money but surprisingly stuff like Heineken uh, which I have found is one of the most popular beers on this whole island which I find strange is a European brand um, is only $11 for a 12 pack uh, Bud Light and Miller Light are pretty similar to stateside prices, so good news there that uh, you can still find cheap, crappy beer um, <laughs> and pound down that swill uh, to make the bad thoughts go away uh, when you first get here. Also, Guam is not a liquor store type situation like a lot of states where the state controls it. Um, as you can see here, you can buy liquor in the grocery store. You can buy liquor in small mom and pop shops. What is confusing is that there are stores here called ABC stores, which in North Carolina is the liquor store, but the ABC stores here are not a liquor store. They're like a tourist store that also does happen to sell liquor, but it's not exclusive. One of my favorite things about this Payless is that they have a bunch of food that they make here in the store, and you can either go through the line and order hot food ready to go, or they have like a deli and you can grab and go. And they always have a mix of local foods and like traditional like lunch stuff like salads and um, sandwiches. My stepfather used to refer to me as the LaCroix of stepsons <laughs> because you think you're getting something good, but all it is is the vague aroma 
of a good boy <laughs> without without the fun and the flavor of a real good boy. So you're just a can of disappointment? He used to call me LaCroix because I was the can of disappointment. <laughs> Watered down nothing. <laughs> But we hit 2,000 subscribers, so who's the LaCroix now, Ben? <laughs> they also have the fun little random things of like household goods and uh, time of year shenanigans, like stuff for Easter, Halloween. It's kind of like being in an Aldi. This has nothing to do with the video, but this looks absolutely delicious. A white chocolate rabbit with filled with fruity stuff. pebbles. I, it has nothing to do with you moving here, but look at some of the more expensive things you might find here and, and of course things that have an expiration date like milk are going to be a little more pricey so like this fair life milk here is eight dollars um uh one gallon of milk of uh like of california sunshine milk is thirteen dollars so thirteen dollars for a gallon off base and a half gallon is going to be six seven bucks so just something to keep in mind if you don't have base access or you prefer to shop off base it's going to cost you here we have bacon uh as you can see i'm showing you beer bacon and milk this is my primary food staples and this uh little one pound thing of bacon is uh 12 dollars and 13 dollars respectively your small container of tillamook is going to be about 10 dollars anyway you can see there's plenty of variety it's a nice store but you got to pay to play here um it is it is rather expensive you can you can still find deals and stuff but if you're going to plan on eating a lot of meat and dairy and stuff like that try to get a friend who can shop for you on base or, or you're just gonna have to go a little, uh, a little more frugal with your shopping and stick to some more prepared noodles and stuff like that because you know you expect expect to hit in your wallet on the grocery bill. Yeah. Um, they also don't allow you to use plastic bags anymore or even paper. It's bring your own or you have to buy one of the reusable shopping bags. Um, this went into enforcement about a year ago, and now this Payless. And a few other ones have completely transitioned where they have no plastic or paper bags anymore, just the reusable. So you're gonna get super frustrated if you come here or Home Depot and forget that, and you walk <laughs> out like this to the car like I do at a Home Depot or here all the time. Uh, so remember, just remember no bags. Or you have a closet full of them because you've just bought them that one day and then you never bring them. And so you just accumulate these. This also has a pharmacy, uh, like similar to, you know, Walgreens or CVS, but the Payless and the Kmart both have pharmacies. All right, that's everything we can possibly say about a grocery store, and I feel super uncomfortable filming in here, so let's go check somewhere else out. <laughs> also, you need, this is in the Micronesia Mall. This is the coolest part about this mall, and you need to come check out this roller coaster. <laughs> All right, so let's go look at one of the most reliably stocked stores on Guam that's going to have some of the most stateside prices um, is Home Depot. And the Home Depot app is really good here too, or the website. If you're looking for something specific, it'll tell you what aisle it's on and if they have it. And it's really accurate from what I've noticed here on Guam and save you some, some headache because one thing about this Home Depot is, is that it's handy, but it's also a Black Friday style crowd every day, seven days a week. From the time the store opens till the time it closes, it's gonna be one of the most busy, crowded Home Depot experiences uh, that you can have. So let's go check that out. And my social anxiety is gonna go through the moon. So we're gonna do this really fast. So let's go in here and do this. Okay, so this is just a random day at Home Depot. There's no big sales. It's not some holiday thing. It's not Christmas. And there, you can see there's just people everywhere. This is one of the rare times you're gonna find an aisle to yourself. So if you're used to going to Home Depot and you know shopping for plumbing parts or whatever, and like it's it's a Home Depot that you need to like get your item and then go because somebody else is gonna be coming behind you to shop for that same thing. This stresses me out. The most stressful video I think we've ever filmed is this video today because we're doing it in public. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so. I love Home Depot, but 
every time I leave here, I think it knocks 15 minutes off my life from my stress. <laughs> All right, so that's Home Depot. They sell wood and nails, um, plumbing parts and toilets. So you get the gist, let's get out of here. That was Home Depot. He um, lasted longer than I thought. <laughs> that's what she said. Um, also, you notice that we're wearing a mask in Guam. Uh, Guam is still one of the few places left on planet Earth that you still wear these. Uh, I think it's down to the territories now. Uh, yep. I think it's just the islands, Hawaii, Guam, Puerto Rico, uh, maybe American, American Samoa. Samoa. Yeah. Um, so if you're coming here, we're still wearing these bad boys. So make sure to have a bunch of these in your car and wherever else you go, because on base, off base, you're still going to be wearing this mask, at least for the time being. And it's uh, late March, late March 2022. So bring a bunch of these. This is definitely the most trying video we've ever made because the premise of most of our videos is to get away from people. And we are literally inserting ourselves into waves of people to make this. So next, we're going to go to another giant chain. All right, so let's go check out this Kmart. It's huge. There's parking on the freaking roof. Uh, it's also really popular. International tourism is shut down right now because of the vid. Um, but when it's not, it's a really popular place for the Japanese tourists to come and take selfies. There's like a wall in the front where they take selfies mm -hmm. and like- They used to have huge shuttles of like a hundred or a couple hundred people at a time come in to like look at Kmart and buy stuff. The other thing is that Kmart here has lost almost all of its contracts with uh, like electronics companies and different companies. So when you come here, it's more like a, a uh, what's that, what's that? Uh, it's more like a big lots. It's more like a discount warehouse oh. where they order things in bulk. So you might come in here one time and there's three aisles of red suitcases or four aisles of paddle boards. And then you come in here the next time and there's none. So it's yeah. kind of fun to come in here and look around and just like, what do they have this week? It's a whole lot of one thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they also still do have a pharmacy and some regular stuff and they do have groceries and stuff here. So let's go check out, see what they have three aisles of this week. <laughs> Come on, fam. One of the most disappointing things I discovered was that Little Caesars Pizza in Guam is not $5 for a large pizza, it's $10 for a large pizza. And I know that prices have gone up stateside as well for Little Caesars, that it's not $5 anymore, but it was heartbreaking for my junk food palate to find that my $5 pizza is double the price. Because I trust the science, you know me. Because I represent science. Uh, the science clearly states that Little Caesars is the best value for caloric intake that a human being can have on planet Earth. If you're going strictly by calories and flavor, nothing beats Little Caesars. For $5, or now $6 in the States, or even $10 here, you can't buy those groceries and make your own pizza. So if you're looking for the smart purchase and you trust the science, it's Little Caesars. I would argue maybe Cinnabon is also on that list for just pure caloric intake. Just trust the science! You can argue and be wrong if you want, but. <laughs> okay. I'm um, opinion versus facts here. <laughs> it really is this whole wall. So for example, we have this one kind of food storage container. It's and we easy have lock. probably a whole shipping container worth of them here. And that's just a small example of, you're gonna find a lot of stuff is, uh, the shelves are full, but it might be full of one item where normally there would be 200 items on this shelf. <laughs> um, so just fun to come look around because next week it might be something different. And if you're hunting for a bargain and you like to shop like I do, <laughs> um, then it's kind of fun to come check out Kmart sometimes. Um, it's hit and miss if you're looking for fishing stuff. I grew up buying uh, hunting and fishing things in Kmart's. This Kmart's not like that. Um, I almost never find any kind of fishing stuff here. The closest to like water sports related stuff because it's Guam, you're going to do stuff in the water. You're gonna find some life jackets sometimes. Uh, there was a period of a couple months when we first bought a boat where they only carried like small Children's. children life jackets. Yeah. Um, so this is fun to come look around at, but if you really need something specific, a lot of times you might not find it here, um, especially not outdoor gear. I wouldn't come here for outdoor gear. Can't, apparently, sometimes they do have weightlifting stuff and different things, but uh, Comes I, in waves. Yeah, I would rather go to Champion Sporting Goods for that. You're gonna find really weird stuff, um, like they have broadheads and they have releases for bows, um, but they don't sell bows and they don't sell the arrows to go with the broadheads. So it's kind of a weird 
mishmash of things that you're going to run into. And that's a really good example of it. What? They sell this one. They have that. The electronic one that you're um, never going to attach a broadhead to. That is the LaCroix of birthday presents. <laughs> this off-brand junky thing for children. Um, I'm sure my stepdad would love to make a joke about that. But That's pretty much Kmart. Uh, not quite as stressful as Home Depot as far as the, the population density usually. And this place is also open 24 hours. So if you're jet lagged and you're coming straight off the plane, there's groceries here. The Little Caesars won't be open, but there's groceries. So you can get something to eat. You can stock your hotel room or your barracks or wherever you're living. Um, so come check out Kmart when you first fly here and your, your hours of sleep are all backwards. Your circadian rhythm's off. So here's the neat thing about the Micronesia Mall is that it's huge and it's still popping like it's the mid 90s. Uh, some of the decor is still very mid 90s. And I find that very fascinating and very nostalgic. So this mall is really nice and it's uh, air conditioned. So it's a fun place to come hang out and get something to eat and buy some expensive trinkets. But more importantly is the secret that hides inside this mall as we come up this escalator here is what's hiding in the back of this mall is my favorite part about it. Let's go check it out. <laughs> What are you saying? Dare we, dare we say your favorite part or the only part you like? It's the only part I can tolerate inside this mall. Okay, it's there we go. Here. Let's there go check go. it out. <laughs> I was going to say, um, the coolest part about this mall, especially the food court, is that we are going back in time to the 90s with the cool glass walls and the teal and the yellow um, and the neon lighting everywhere. The food options inside this food court are actually really, really good. You got a lot of Asian food, there's Filipino food, there's Chamorro food in here, and then there's also staples like Subway. Uh, and Taco Bell. And Saboro and Taco Bell. You got local restaurants, you got all kinds of stuff. So it's a really, it's a really nice food court actually to come check out. I'm not a mall person, but I do, this is a guilty pleasure for me is this mall. So hidden in the back of this food court is an indoor like arcade called Fantastic Park. Are you still here? <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. We hope you guys learned something today, whether you're civilian or military, PCSing here, whether Big Daddy government's telling you you're moving to Guam and you never got to ask, or maybe you're a civilian travel nurse or something and you decided to move here. We covered not so fun stuff, uh, but maybe it's the most helpful of things that we've provided so far while being here. So this video was all kind of the boring stuff like where you get your car inspected, mechanic, where to go to buy basic home goods. Um, and the next videos, we're going to be covering some different stuff. Uh, you know, where do you go mountain biking? Where do you go camping? Where do you go off-roading? Where do you go to the beach? And we're going to cover some more of that fun stuff, but we're going to get this one out of the way first. And it's the necessities. So if you were just arriving, this is the best one to see first as you want to know where to go for those immediate things right when you land. And I want to take this moment to speak directly to you. You're that shy kid with not a lot of friends and you're joining the military solo, single and alone. And this is the first time you've ever left Podunk, Oklahoma or Nebraska. I was you. I never ate sushi till I moved to Japan because Big Daddy government said you're moving to Japan. Don't be scared. Come to Guam. You're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be really scary at first um, because it's new and you don't know how to get anywhere and they don't use they don't use road names. You're gonna have to learn back road and cross island. We'll cover that in some, some future videos, but don't be scared. Come to Guam. You're gonna have a lot of fun if you're a young service member or a young travel nurse or something like that. They speak English and use the US dollar. So it's like the easiest transition for your first place outside from home. Yep, so enjoy it. If you're that young person who's uh, nervous about leaving mommy for the first time, you got some weird mommy issues or some weird stepdaddy issues, Ben. <laughs> so enjoy it and uh, we'll see you guys for the next video that'll be a little bit more fun and outdoorsy than this one.